Okay, question number three comes in from Nils. Uh, hi there, Nils. Thank you for your question. Uh, so Nils says, uh, me and my girlfriend are first-time buyers. Uh, I'm putting 50000 towards the deposit, uh, whilst she can only afford 12000 And uh, to be fair to each other, we've, uh, we've also agreed to split all expenses 65-35, as I'm also the biggest earner. We're not looking to get married anytime soon and have no kids. Her father has suggested that even though our contributions are different, the property ownership should be split 50-50. We're going to be tenants in common. Her father said that should we split up, it might cause problems as these things can get bitter. Would we both be entitled to our initial deposits? Uh, as I, uh, and is it fair to think if I have paid the most and will be contributing the most that I should get a bigger share of the sale if we end up selling? Okay, great question there, Nils. Thanks for that. Um, I really appreciate what you're, what you're saying there. And this is quite common in a lot of situations where two people come together and there's different financial uh, firepower, if you like, as far as their concern coming into the relationship. Either, as you put it, a bigger deposit or bigger uh, earning power or both. And the way I would approach it as far as you're concerned is go into this whole thing eyes wide open, similar to what I was saying to uh, the first question here that came in from uh, Kenny about having things in writing. It's absolutely vital. If you're going into uh, a relationship where you're not married, you're going to be cohabiting, you're buying a property together. Um, as Judge Judy would say, you're, you're playing uh, you're playing couples, okay? You're playing as a married couple. That's her way of looking at things. Um, but the way to look at it is you're going into this eyes wide open. You need to have everything in writing of what you're agreeing to so that, God forbid, if things do fall apart, you've got something you can refer back to that stops all the arguments, that stops all the bitterness, that says, okay, this is what we agreed going into this. This is what how we're going to exit this whole thing on the back end. And it, you you want to look at it from a point of view that if you're putting the majority of the money in up front, if it was fair in terms of running the monthly household bills and you were both contributing the same, then it would seem fair that if you just took your deposits back initially and then whatever equity growth was in the um, property over the time of ownership, if you split that 50-50, that would seem a fair way to approach things, right? But you know, it sounds to me as though there's going to be a, a very different approach as far as the monthly running of the property is concerned. Um, and I would be careful to make sure that was agreed in writing and done up front because it, it could get difficult, as you say, if things start to fall apart and things start to get um, uh, a little bit more should we say, agitated, particularly if there's more people involved, like, for example, uh, what would be your father-in-law if you if you got uh, married, there would be potentially additional pressure uh, that could come to bear in that sort of a situation. Now, I want to give you a bit of an example because this happened to a friend of mine many years ago. And uh, he was a wonderful, wonderful guy. L love him to bits. Um, I won't mention who it is. Um, but he'll know when, it, you know when I tell the story. But what happened was him and his partner bought a property uh, in the Northeast. They had uh, been to, living together for about three years, I think, in one property. Uh, they sold that. They then upgraded to a bigger property. And it needed quite a lot of work doing to it. So uh, what they agreed was that her father would do uh, a lot of the renovation works to the property. And I think, off the top of my head, I think he quoted something like £23,000 to do the renovation works, right? That was all agreed. Uh, he got on with the work. And then about two thirds of the way through the job, he said, yeah, it's actually going to be more like 34000 And I'm like, okay, that's a major jump. And this was at a time when their relationship was starting to break down. It was starting to get a little bit contentious. And uh, he actually invited us up to have a look at the property. And I, at the time, I was just qualifying as a surveyor. And I'm looking around this house and going, okay, uh, there was a dwarf wall where the, in the kitchen where some of the units backed up to. And I sort of leant against this wall. And I, I kid you not, it started rocking. And I was like, oh, my goodness, like, this is not good. And that, uh, he, got, <laughs> he got these French doors that opened out onto the garden, right? And I said, who, who fitted these doors? 
and uh, he laughingly said uh, it was um, it was a blind guy, meaning uh, the father-in-law was also a blind fitter. Uh, but the way he said it, it was just like he was a blind guy. And I looked at him like, I'm not surprised because the hinges were buried about uh, um, three quarters of an inch into the timber frames. And I was like, what on earth has been going on here? It was just a, it was just a mess, basically. And I just thought, why would you be spending your hard-earned cash on employing a cowboy builder, even if it is your uh, what would be your father-in-law? And that relationship ended up going south, and uh, and they they ended up splitting up. Now I wasn't privy to what the financial arrangement was going in, and I wasn't privy to the financial arrangement coming out. But what I can tell you is that having stuff in writing uh, definitely eases the burden when it comes to uh, the emotional side of things when when there's a parting of company between those between the two of you because. At the moment, you're getting on well. The relationship's going well by the sounds of things. It must be because you're thinking about getting a house together, right? So have that conversation. God forbid this happens. We decide to split up. How are we going to handle it? I think it's fair that I'm putting 50,000 into this property, that I get at least that 50,000 pounds back. You know, you might want to capitulate on the fact that you're going 65, 35 on the bills, um, that you then decide to, uh, you know, take 50 50 on the equity she's getting a 15 percent gain on any equity over the course of the next three five ten years however long you guys are together and god forbid you don't you don't end up selling this is just a precautionary measure but it's sensible and if you're meeting resistance having that conversation and documenting things in writing it might be a red flag for other things that might unfold in the relationship in the future okay obviously i don't know you both i don't know all of the scenarios that uh, are around you both. But the, there's other things, as I say, that will potentially influence this, such as what happens if you know one of you runs up a load of credit card debt or what happens if uh, one of you doesn't make your payments on your credit cards or your car payments or whatever else it might be. Who's on the hook for what payments? Who's on the hook for the mortgage? God forbid one of you loses your job. What then? What then? What then? Okay, so having that conversation Yes, it's difficult, and yes, you have to go at it with cool and rational heads, but it's far better to do it up front when the relationship is sound than trying to negotiate it on the back end when you know things are really uncertain. And of course, the other thing is that you know if you're buying a property now and the market dips 20%, you, buy, you both might be out of pocket because the property might be in negative equity. I don't, I don't know. You know. I'm just throwing that out there as an idea. These are the sorts of things that you need to think about and you need to have those conversations with. Um, I had another friend actually who bought a property with his partner and they uh, this was before the last credit crunch. This was about 2006, I think it was. Uh, and they got 125% mortgage on the property. Okay, it, it was shocking, but they were going to build this extension on the side. And then again, him and his partner ended up splitting up. I don't know all of the ins and outs of that financial situation, but you can understand that if there's no equity in the property, it probably makes the decision to split a lot easier. But also don't forget that somebody's on the hook for all of that level of debt, right? So you need to have that honest and frank and open conversation. And if you, if you want more uh, ideas of what to include in that conversation, then just let me know. I'm more than happy to throw a few more questions at you, Niels. But I think have, have it up front, get it in writing, agree it between the two of you. Then you can at least show that you've had that honest conversation with your uh, father-in-law that might just give him a bit more peace of mind as to you know the fact that you're both being adults and you're going into this thing eyes wide open, and then it's just down to the both of you to work at the relationship and uh, make sure that it uh, unfolds the way you want it to. Okay, so best of luck with that, Nils. Uh, as I say, anything else we can do to help, let me know. Uh, otherwise, good luck and have a great Christmas. So, ladies and gentlemen, that draws our webinar to a close today. Thank you so much again for all of your questions and for joining in, and for your incredible support over the course of the last. Uh, well, I suppose in 90 days or so that we've been running these um, webinars, it's really wonderful to be able to sort of share some uh, help and support and advice to, to various different people and uh, help you along with your property journey, because I know how uh, daunting and complicated it can seem when you're getting uh, first started getting into property. Uh, and I remember one of the most humbling experiences for me was, uh, I think it was 2006, when I'd spent a number of years in the property industry as an estate agent and also trained to become a surveyor. And I went to my very first property investment education uh, seminar, right? And 
I was like, yeah, it's dead easy to make money in property, right? This is all you need to do, buy it, do it up and sell it. And I got introduced to this entirely different world of uh, not only just personal development education, but also different strategies, techniques, and uh, tools that you can use to build a property portfolio that nobody had ever showed me before. And I was like, oh my goodness. And that was, as I say, one of the start of my um, journey to realizing how much I don't know as an individual. And yeah, it's been really interesting to change my life since 2006 to uh, become more wide, widely read and more studying of realizing that I don't know uh, virtually <laughs> anything as far as this world is concerned. There is so much to learn, so much to understand, so much to get our heads around. Um, but that, as I say, has led me on this journey of learning a huge amount of stuff, which I'm now able to share with as many people as possible through these webinars and through these uh, questions that we send out every week to people. And so I greatly appreciate every single one of you uh, for being part of our Wigabum community, for submitting your questions each week, for taking the time to watch our webinars, and also to share uh, these questions and these webinars with your friends and family. Uh, it really does help us to reach more and more people. There's some incredibly exciting things coming in 2023 as far as WIGUM is concerned. So I hope you'll join us on that journey. Uh, please, please, please uh, do uh, submit your questions. We are going to continue running these webinars throughout. Uh, we're going to do one between Christmas and New Year, and then we're going to launch into 2023 with uh, a lot more uh, on the webinar content side of things. So any questions, concerns, comments that you have, uh, please send them through to us. Happy to help at wigiwam.co.uk. That's happy to help at wigiwam.co.uk. Uh, you can also submit information to us via our website, which is uh, wigiwam.co.uk. That's wigiwam.co.uk. Or you can uh, find us on Twitter, which is um, at wigiwam underscore UK, at wigiwam underscore UK. And uh, again, submit any questions, comments, feedback to that. Feel free to consider sharing this with your friends and family so that we can uh, expand our reach and, and reach more people. And if there's anything that we can do to help you with your property journey, please do let me know. Um, final mention to our £50,000 Christmas giveaway. If you want to take part in that, just shoot me an email. Happy to help at wigiwam.co.uk with the subject line Christmas giveaway. That's happy to help at wigiwam.co.uk with the subject line Christmas giveaway. And uh, I would look forward to welcoming you into our 12-week roadmap journey in um, the new year, which will help you get at least 20% additional revenue in your business or build you up to be a superstar player if you're an individual working for a company and you want to take part in that as well. So we're doing our bit to try and help you guys and girls. Uh, wishing you all the very best for Christmas, whatever it is you decide to do. Hope you have an amazing time. Uh, hope it is the Christmas that you uh, want and it's a, a nice time to reflect and take some time for you and uh, just uh, reflect on, on the year that's gone and the one that's coming and may it bring you all that you wish for for yourself and others. All right. Looking forward to it, guys and girls. Thank you so much indeed. Have a lovely Christmas and uh, New Year and I will see you very soon. You take care. Bye-bye.